I've been doing a lot of research over the last few weeks because I'm disappointed with the data that I've been hearing on the news, the lack of respect for citing the source of that data, and the data I've been hearing from our politicians. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about accurate crime data, comparing that crime data to other countries, and why I think the data is different. So let's go over to FBI.gov and look at the Uniform Crime Reports. These are reports the FBI has been putting out every year for a long period of time. Uh, what I like about these is that these are unbiased and that the FBI does not advocate policy. I have a hard time accepting statistics from organizations that are actively lobbying Congress or in some way, shape, or form are trying to create policy. So let's look at the national data for violent crimes. Let's look at 1992. We'll see that in 1992, we had a violent crime rate of 757 per 100,000 and a murder rate of 9.3 per 100,000. Now let's fast forward to 2011. We have a violent crime rate now of 386 per 100,000. That is a 50% reduction in violent crime. We have a murder rate of 4.7 per 100,000. That is a 54% decrease. So what I find astonishing about these numbers is that nobody's talking about it. Our media isn't talking about it. Our politicians aren't talking about it. I and mean, we have a 50% reduction in the violent crime rate over the last 20 years, yet no one is taking credit for it. I find it, I mean, pretty astonishing. It's unbelievable. I mean, does it not play into their fear agenda? Uh, that, you know, you're gonna walk outside your front door and you're gonna get shot? It, I can't make any sense of it. And, and so I started looking at the data even further to see that the crime we do have, where is it coming from? When you start to look a little more closely at the data, one thing you'll notice. In metropolitan areas where the population is greater than 250,000, our violent crime rate is double that of the national average. Our murder rate is double that of the national average as well. When looking at the data, you can pinpoint where the crime is coming from. I mean, you can dissect that data even further and look on a neighborhood level and see where the true trouble spots are. So I wanna know, who's working on improving that? I mean, I notice that whenever you try to bring something like that up, it's always a redirect. You know, they wanna compare America to another country. You know, America, you guys are always so much more violent than the British. I mean, are we? So let's go over and look at the home office. The home office keeps statistics that are comparable to the FBI. We're gonna be looking at just England and Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland keep their own crime stats and those stats are slightly higher. So the England and Wales stats we're looking at will be just a little bit lower. And just to let you know, uh, England and Wales has a population of 56 million, Northern Ireland and Scotland uh, would be about an additional 10 million. So we're just looking at the population of England and Wales. Let's look at 2011. 2011, uh, England and Wales had 762,000 violent crime offenses. That is a ratio of 1,361 violent crimes per 100,000. That is three and a half times the violent crime rate of the United States. England and Wales does have a murder rate of 1.3. That is lower than the United States, but I think it's important to also look at the overall violent crime. And this is something that you don't hear on the news because they wanna pick and choose their stats that meets their agenda. But when you clearly look at overall violent crime, the UK has much, much more than ours. So, Less guns does not necessarily mean less violent crime. Now they do have a lower murder rate, but there's a lot of other factors to look at when you're comparing country to country. And there's one important piece of data that is not taken into consideration. As I already mentioned before, the United States, the bulk of our violent crime is in very small pockets in large metropolitan areas. In the US, we have 186 metropolitan areas where the population is 250,000 or greater. In the UK, they have only 32 metropolitan areas where the population is 250,000 or greater. There's a lot of different data to take into consideration when comparing country to country. And honestly, we've just scratched the surface. But one thing I'll tell you is our media and our politicians have not been clear with this. They make it seem so much easier than it is. And there are a few things that we do know 
Over the past 20 years, our violent crime rate in the U.S. has dropped by 50%. We know where the crime is coming from, metropolitan areas with population of over 250,000. We know that the U.K. has a higher violent crime rate than us. And we also know that we have six times more large metropolitan areas than they do. All of those factors have to be considered. I feel like our media isn't being honest about this. They're using the public airwaves to spread their agenda and wrong information, Pierce Morgan, as well as our politicians that are already introducing legislation before they even understand what the problem is, Dianne Feinstein. Did you know in 2011, out of the homicides that were caused by firearms, only 3.5% were caused by rifles. And the AR-15 is a subset of the rifle group. Way to pinpoint the problems. I'm going to tell you what. If they want to solve violent crime, they need to put on their boots and go to those neighborhoods and figure out how to improve the poverty level, how to create jobs, and how to improve the education system. That is how you're going to reduce the violent crime in those neighborhoods.